time, I'd like to um, introduce our um, our primary speaker for the day, who's going to give us uh, our our grassroots state of the state, yeah, or perhaps even state of the nation state, because we all know whose lands we stand upon. Yeah? Yeah. What we're talking about fundamentally is a sovereignty issue for Kanaka Maoli today. And this, so without any uh, further ado, I'd like to introduce my esteemed friend, mentor to many of us, Kumu to many of us, one of our brilliant Hawaiian educators, <laughs> activists, analysts, Kalekoa Kaeo. As I begin, let me just kind of share a little bit for us to understand. Speaking to our Kanaka, our Lahui Kanaka, first of all. We have been here in these islands for nearly 2,000 years. Before there was an America, before many of the European countries came out of the caves, that's true. We had sailed the ocean blue to come here as a people. To come to the most remotest spot on this planet. And when we came here, we found one of the most beautiful, if not the most beautiful place on the earth. And it is here we grew a great civilization. One where there was no homeless people. One where there were no people who slept hungry. One where there was no children. They were left out in the rain. But the reality for us today as a people, this is the conditions for how many of our people suffer to this day. And so the main purpose for me here today is to remind us the Lahuik, we have never always been in this condition. This is a condition which has been imposed on our people. This is a condition which has shackled our people. This is a condition which oppresses our people every day. But have no fear. Because the good news is, even with all that has been put on us, there is not a place on the planet that is as militarized, missionized, commodified as this place here in Hawaii. And yet, our Kiki still sing and dance the songs of our people. As the great saying goes, the strongest people, oh sorry, the strongest swimmers swim in the roughest seas. Never forget that, because if that's the best they got, we already got them licked. But we also must remember in our history, especially for Lahui Kanaka, it is said that it is nearly between 800 to a mil 800,000 to a million people at one time lived upon these islands. Self-sufficient and sustainable. 
And by the overthrow of 1893, we were down to a mere 40,000. So roughly only one in 20 survived. Only about 5% of our people made it through to 1893. So all of you who have the Koko Hawaii, Lahui Kanaka, you can never forget. See, our lives not cheap. Our lives are not cheap. Because from the 5%, we are still here. And the good news, we are still growing. And when I go for the king, we come from people who were very innovative. We were able to adapt understood scientific principles and technology. And see, if you, if you understand that, you realize, you know, it's easy to go back where you came from before versus trying to go on a new journey. So for many of us, it is really about reawakening this understanding. Ho'ala. I'm born and raised on the island of Maui. Proud graduate of a great missionary named school, Henry Parine Baldwin High School. But my family, we have been there from time immemorial. I continue to live there and I hope my children will continue to live on there where I raised two children. So we're not going anywhere as a people. We will endure, we will only pop. So as I like to say to the governor's office and those who will power over our people at this time, to remember, we as the people are here for a long haul. We've been here for 2,000 years and we will be here for 2,000 more. And with that, let me just jump into the so-called state of the state address provided by Governor New Abercrombie a couple of weeks back, or a week ago. And first I do mahalo, this famous rain of Kutalulu, which has come to bless us today. Aloha. But what is so astounding, let me ask you, what did the governor say about Native Hawaiians in his address? He said nothing. Did not mention one word. Did not talk about who we are as a people and what it means here in Hawaii. We have been erased in the politics of the governor. We have been thrown to the side. We have been ignored. But there's two reasons for that I want you to think about. The first, of course, is that they already see the situation and condition of us Hawaiians as being something that has been cleansed from them. He's probably looking at efforts, whether through Kanaiolo Valu, whether through the $200 million so-called settlement with Office of Hawaiian Affairs, which ended, in their eyes, the question of Hawaiian self-determination. Or, I believe, is true fear. He's fearful of addressing the Hawaiian concerns because he knows and the state and the power will just know the core to the resistance of what is going on in Hawaii is the Hawaiian voice. This voice is the voice which will challenge which is challenging the powers to be in their efforts from not just wiping out the so-called Hawaiian question, but to continue to profit over our so-called demise and our uh, treatment as being inhuman. But with that, we should always realize Although they may think of us as something in antiquity, as artifacts of Hawaii's history, that somehow they have moved on beyond the Hawaiian question, we are here to remind them again that we are here. 
And we are putting on public notice, on public notice, that we are organizing, that we are reawakening, and that we will, in fact, fight, and we will struggle, and we will resist, and we will be, in fact, victorious in the end. We also must analyze and understand some basic facts about the situation. The Hawaiian people are under a system of domination. We are a dominated people. They are dominators. And so whenever we analyze the situation, we cannot forget that the dominators, their main purpose is to keep the domination going. Their main goal is for the dominated to buy into being dominated. That is the purpose, that is the game, that is the challenge in which we have. But we need to say, although we recognize we are dominated, we're not here to ask for a longer leash. We're not here to ask for a cleaner cage. We are here to say that we will be free. We are here to say that we are fighting for the righteousness of Ka'ea or Ka'aina. Remember these famous words. Everybody say, Ea. 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 Oka'aina. Oka the word Ea is a powerful word. It is the life. It is the sovereignty, the independence, that, the power to rule and govern and to manage. But our kupuna gave us, gave us this great, not just message, but instructions. You see, many people get caught up in thinking, when they, when they talk about our political rights, they get caught up with the idea. It's about a settlement of money. Or it's about entitlements. Or it's about the right to develop. It's in some kind of constitutional government. It's in some kind of name list. But the Eo Oka'aina is the lesson. See, whenever we fight and organize for the protection of the Aina, that which feeds us, we provide this humanity to our own selves. That is our political voice. Every time we defend the Aina, we take a step forward. Eo Aina is the challenge for all of us here today. And look at all the various organizations that are here. It's really about the people retaking control of this Eo Aina and not be foolishly led into discussions or ideas which take us away from really what's most important. See, a lot of these lessons were provided from us, for us. Yeah, as we know in the Mele Aipohaku, Aipohaku, eat the wondrous rocks, the food of the land. What will make us as a Lahui Kanaka live on for 2,000 years is not a bigger bankroll, it's not a longer list of names. It's the control of the air Oka'aina. It's being on the land. It's providing shelter and food to our people. That's the direction we must always remember to head for and not be misled down paths which only confuse us and only re-supports the continued domination of our people. We also should realize that there's this illusion of dependency, this idea that Governor Abercrombie knows what's best for the Lahui Kanaka. Then he knows fairly, more judiciously, how we should look at the land. See, but the illusion is something as an illusion that by truth will be dissolved. By organizing, will be put to the side. 
and more purposely by unity amongst the different voices will be dismantled see aloha aina is subversive aloha aina is subversive to the power structure as it is today you know those who are talking about the second and third bmw hiding in gated communities talking about a second uh, jacuzzi Aloha challenges that. Because you cannot have gated communities and talk about Aloha Aina. You cannot have the military in Makua poisoning our people's land and talk about Aloha Aina. You cannot talk about imposing monuments and structures of the colonial settler on our most sacred mountains and not talk about Aloha Aina. In fact, let me give you an example on Maui. When we were struggling, or still struggling over the question of the ATST or the Advanced Technology Solar Telescope. And I met with the head person for the National Science Foundation and I asked them directly. And I told them, you know, the great Mahatma Gandhi said this. One of the seven sins is science without humanity. Science without humanity. And I asked him, what is the humanity in this telescope? Kanaka to scientists. And his response was this. This is for pure selfish research. That's the truth. That is the truth. So we talk about building up on a city. See, I always say this too. I'm not opposed, I honestly would say, I would not be opposed to building upon those sacred mountains. If I knew where's the Kanaka, that would save a million lives perhaps. It would provide shelter to a people. You know, because I, I can suffer for the betterment of mankind. As a kupuna have taught us, kapu keola na kani. Life is sacred to kani. Life is the most sacred ideology of our people. But for pure selfish research, you're going to take our most sacred mountains? That's a slap in our face. But the question is, what are we going to do about it? You see, that's the point. How are we going to resist it? What are we going to do? As you heard in the governor's address, that was one of the talking points. $1.2 billion project. See, the profiteers are coming in. The fat cats are getting their, their wallets ready. Their motivation is the profiteering off of our demise. But see, for Lahawi Kanaka, I say this, we got a secret weapon. And the secret weapon is the ideology of Aloha Aina. The secret weapon is that for Kanaka, the Lahui Kanaka, we have no choice. We can only resist and fight back. See, that's why we don't have any other options. Because we understand if we don't fight back now, if we don't resist now, if we don't struggle now, we will be gone in 20 years. We will be assimilated in 20 years. We will become artifacts in 20 years. And we will become, you know, uh, posters and something you see uh, in, in, in tourism uh, galleries. See, so, but, but for me, I'm a big believer. Because we have no choice in a secret weapon, and because we have these lessons provided us from our kupuna, it will lead us to struggle into the future. It will provide us the means by which we will be able to organize and mobilize and do whatever is necessary to protect K.L. Oka'aina. <clears throat> and I'm here to say also, as a state of the state address, that the governor and the state of Hawaii recognize that they are in conflict of interest, of course, whenever they're talking about Hawaiian issues. 
how can the state of Hawaii through the governor's office negotiate with a state agency via the Office of Hawaiian Affairs to settle our interests as the Lahui Kanaka? How can one pocket negotiate with the other? See, this can only happen if you foolishly believe that is the only option. <clears throat> and we should also realize, like that supposed purported settlement, and one of the lessons I want everybody to realize, especially Lao Hui Kanak and everybody else here to understand, for the Hawaiian people, we do not have an economic problem. I want you guys to pay attention. We don't have an economic problem. We have a political problem. Yeah. I want you guys to realize this. The Kamehameha schools alone is worth between six and ten billion dollars, whether it's a good day at the stock market. The Office of Hawaiian Affairs has hundreds of million dollars. And then you add to this, of course, our lands. Nearly two million acres of land in these islands, which belong to our people. These are Hawaiian Kingdom, Crown and Government lands. Belong to our people. And fat cats are profiting off of using this, these lands to service their own interests. So part of the reawakening of, of course is to understand as Hawaiians, we gotta organize ourselves right now. We gotta look and plan and how we will take back these resources for us under our control. How we look at these lands and return to our people. Because yeah? we no longer can look at the state government to somehow have the better interest at hand for our people. So there will be a transition of power. It has already begun. <clears throat> One of the lessons of the great Elijah Muhammad I wanted to share today also. And he talks about organizing. And of course his great pupil Malcolm X said, the greatest mistake in organizing a sleeping people is you have to first wake them up to their humanity, their heritage, and then you get action. He says, Elijah Muhammad also said, if you train people to drink out of a dirty glass of water, and their whole lives have been drinking out of this dirty glass of water, they may not realize they're drinking out of a dirty glass of water. And see, part of our role here, all of us here, Kako, is to showcase, first of all, that that glass is dirty. But even better, here is a clean glass of water from which you can drink. You see, people by the common nature, if you give them the choice, will not choose to drink that from the dirty glass. They will choose to drink from the clean glass. Even if you add Malolo syrup or, you know, Gatorade or, I don't know, sugar into that dirty glass, people automatically would realize and for the first time would realize that all this time they've been drinking from a dirty glass. And so we, we as the voices of people, we must show our people the clean glass of water, the better way. A way for us, all of us, can enjoy the future of these islands. <clears throat> so what are we talking about Kanai Olovalo? Which is the state's initiative. Be clear about that. This is the state of Hawaii's initiative. If you don't believe me, go check who signed the legislation. Go check who appoints the so-called list commissioners. Let me ask you in the Kanayolo Valo legislation, how many acres of land? How many acres of land? How many gallons of water? So you gotta be clear. No land, no water, no life, no air, no future. See, especially when we already understand that that's our land. Especially when we understand Self-determination depends on the self 
And I don't know how Governor Abercrombie snuck in to become the self and the voice of Hawaiian people. You see? But, the other hand also, is it's up to us, it's our kuleana to take back. See, the organizing of our people is for us to do. Yeah? And so, as I shared in Maui last week, and I hear some of the voices saying, Oh, but Kaleko, I'm tired of waiting. And as I respond, well, I'm tired of you waiting. Because if you're waiting, I don't want to know you. This is not about waiting. This is about doing. This is about organizing. This is about teaching. This is about sharing. This is about stepping forward as a people. We're not stepping back. We're moving forward. And so I know my, my, my time is up and stuff, and I just went to... <clears throat> Let me just skip to my... Last couple pages here. <laughs> but I want to also touch upon this. One of the key elements for me here is the spirit and understanding of lokahi. The unity. Whether we're kanaka or non-kanaka, the only way we can challenge and defeat the profiteers is if we work together. The only way we can move forward for a better Hawaii is if we share and listen to one another. The only way we can reclaim the future and destiny of our people is that we got to be able to sit and share. We may not believe in everything that is shared, but we, we got to understand this lesson. Our disunity guarantees their future. Our disunity will guarantee their future. However, our unity, our unity will bring about the future that we all want. And let me just add, finally, <laughs> to remind ourselves from the words that were provided by our kupuna. Very short prophecy chant that was given that we all know. Yes, we can say it together. E piyano. Oh, sorry, I already make havoc. You see. E ihoana o luna. E piyana o lalo. E huyana na moku. E kuana kapaya. E ihoana o luna. E piyana o lalo. E huyana na moku. E kuana kapaya. E ihoana o luna. E piyana o lalo. E huyana na moku. E kuana kapaya. Wamau ke ea o ka aina ika kono. E ola kako.